Alright, uh, what's up mga kapatid? Kamusta po kayong lahat, ano? Uh, thank you so much po sa palagyan niyo pong pagsuporta sa akin, ano? Sa munting channel ko, ano? Uh, nagtataka ba kayo? Tanong ko lang. Nagtataka ba kayo bakit sa napakahabang panahon ng iyong pagtatrabaho ay wala pa rin kayong naipon? Lalong-lalo na po kung ikay OFW na nanonood ngayon. Kapatid, panoorin mo ang uh, buong uh, video na ito ano dahil napakarami mong uh, learnings na makukuha rito ano ito yung mga best uh, mga money advice ano kagaya ng dapat uh, gumastos lang tayo ng uh, nararapat ano at saka sa pagbili ng mga bagay-bagay dapat gumamit lang po tayo ng cash and debit cards uh, instead na credit cards ano and of course dapat meron tayong emergency funds Uh, and marunong din tayong uh, maghanap ng paraan para uh, mag-increase ang ating earning ability. Ano? And of course, also, dapat uh, meron din tayong mga listahan, keep track of our finances. So mga kapatid, yun po ay ilan lamang po sa mga dapat nating uh, intindihan ano? para para malaman natin ang buong detalya. Ano? Panoorin po natin ang buong video ito. Ano? Kung bago ka rito, sana huwag mong kalimutan mag-like, mag-comment, mag-subscribe at i-click ang aking uh, notification button nang sa ganun ay mag update ka kapatid kapag ka may mga bago po tayo mga uploads na mga videos na talagang makatulong po. Kapatid, huwag na huwag mong uh, palalampasin ang video ito. Tapusin mo ha. Dahil alam ko po maraming malaking tulong ito para sa iyong pag-undan. Maraming salamat. Tara. A funny social media meme read, Dear Money, please come back to me. I promise to treat you right this time. As amusing as it may sound, that man captures the situation of many individuals today. For the benefit of people who were once wealthy and those who want to be rich, in this video, I will be sharing with you 13 best money advice. 1. Spend less than you earn. Spending less than you earn is one of the essential financial concepts to follow. No matter how much you make, if you do not develop the habit of having lesser expenses, you will soon always go broke and never attain financial freedom. The secret to spending less than you earn is using a working financial rule of thumb. There are many fiscal rules of thumbs, but one effective one is the 50-20-20-10 rule. Here, 50% goes to your need and necessities, like food, housing, etc. 20% should be the amount you pay yourself, savings for your financial goals. The other 20% is meant to be for your wants like a new smartphone, fancy clothes, etc. and the last 10% should go into your emergency funds. Are you concerned about if your needs and wants are more than 50% and 20% respectively? Then you are living above your means. 2. Shop alone Have you ever gone shopping with friends? You know how it feels when they exclaim or gush about how perfectly it fits and how you have to get it for every piece of clothing you try on. To many of these scenarios is the reason why you cannot meet up with your financial goals. When you shop with friends, the likelihood that you will spend more than your budget, mainly if you're using a debit or credit card, is high. Some friends will even make you buy something, not because you need them, but as so, they will feel less guilty about their spending habits. If you are the type of person who quickly gets influenced by your peers, it will be better if you did your shopping on your own. Your friends may not understand your budgets or financial goals and trying to convince them is usually futile. Thus, to save yourself the stress and unnecessary extra expense, shop alone. 3. When you get a raise, don't increase your expenses. When they get a salary raise or extra allowances, many individuals are so quick to increase their expenses. But unless you must include those expenditure, you should stick with your previous budget. South African writer and social critic Moko Koma Mokhono Anna says, The reason why a man is never satisfied with his salary is that when his income increases, he increases his expenses. Instead of increasing your expenditure, every time you get promoted, pay yourself more money. By this, I mean that you should channel the excess into your financial goals account. The higher your investments, the faster it will be for you to attain financial freedom. 4. Use cash more often. The latest trend when stepping out is to pick up your debit or credit card and take only a small amount for transportation and other minor things. This trend is common because more than ever, small retail shops are beginning to adopt credit cards. But then again, 
the use of cards rather than cash amounts to being broke. The old-fashioned method of carrying real money will save you more money. When going out, it is best to go with cash and not your cards. Somehow, it is much easier to stick to your budgets and overcome the temptation of impulse shopping when you go out with money. The next time you go out except for huge items, carry only the total amount on your list, plus a little sum just in case of increased prices or emergency. 5. Make money work for you The most crucial strategy of the wealthy is that they make their money work for them. This idea was first mentioned in the book, The Richest Man in Babylon. Then, Robert Kiyosaki shed more light on it in his Rich Dad Poor Dad. One of the mistakes that many people make is continually saving money in their bank accounts with the mind that they will be wealthy when the money gets to a particular amount. But here is the hard truth. Saving alone cannot make you rich. While it is essential to have savings, it is also vital that you channel the money saved into profitable investments that can yield you more money. Invest in stocks, bonds and other appreciating assets that can increase your cash flow passively. 6. Have an emergency account Having a separate account for an emergency is one vital yet overlooked financial advice. Most people adopt the 50-30-20 rule of thumb models, 50% for needs, 30% for investments and 20% for wants. While this model is an excellent one, it has its loopholes in that there is no provision for emergencies like a car breakdown, a phone repair and other unforeseen situations. American radio host Dave Ramsey once said, The money you have sitting there just for emergencies is not there to make you money. It is there to protect your investments because if you don't have the emergency fund, you will borrow money and pay out interest and horrible terms to some banks. Although nobody wishes for all these adverse circumstances to arise, they are a part of life and you should be prepared for them. 7. Increase your earning ability Most people tend to debate on whether it is better to reduce your expenses or increase your earning ability. While it is advisable to spend moderately, it is also wise for you to look into your earning capacity. In the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, Robert Kiyosaki suggests that it is better to ask yourself, how can I afford this thing, than to say, I cannot afford it outrightly. When you ask yourself how, your brain is triggered to think great ideas. As much as you can, you must look for ways to increase your earning ability. Take a course, learn a new skill and venture into unfamiliar waters because when your income increases, your savings and investment increase, which means more money for you. 8. Start saving early In the year 2010, Warren Buffett said, My wealth has come from a combination of living in America, some lucky genes and compound interest. Compound interest is a powerful tool that only a few people utilize. It does not matter how little the amount you save, with consistency, you'll get considerable dividends in years to come. Here's an illustration. John saves $5,000 per year for 10 years from age 18. Alice, on the other hand, keeps the same $5,000 per year for 30 years from age 28. When they are 58, you'll find that even though both had the same interest rates and Alice saved three times more than John, John's returns will be higher than that of Alice. Time is an essential variable a young investor has on his or her side. Use it wisely and when you start saving, outweighs how much you save. 9. Don't buy on impulse Impulse shopping is one of the things that suck your income. Anytime you purchase something you weren't planning to, that's impulse buying. It can be as small as grabbing a candy bar in the checkout line that was not on your grocery list or as big as purchasing a convertible when you plan to get a regular small car. You may not feel the effect of sliding out of your budget and buying unnecessary stuff immediately, but it sure is wrecking your finances. It has been discovered that Americans impulsively spend an average of $450 every month. That adds up to an extra $5,400 spent every year. Now imagine how much $5,400 will yield if it was invested. Yeah, that will be a considerable sum. Resist the temptation to buy based on impulse. 10. Set tangible budgets One major money challenge many people face is making a reasonable budget. 
Tons of people find it difficult to fix the necessary things they need on their budget. Instead, they fill it up with wants. The main reason for this faulty budget in style is that many individuals cannot clearly distinguish their needs from their desires. Your needs are things that fall into the category of shelter, clothing and food. By housing, I do not mean a mansion. Neither does clothing depict the latest trend or food junk. Whatever that does not fall in those categories are wants. Mobility and communication can also be categorized as needs. Before you start making a list of things to buy, critically examine and differentiate between your desires and needs. 11. Buy shares in a startup company If you're going by the same potential consideration of startups, owning one or more startup companies could be a valuable investment if it thrives and either floats or it's sold to a larger enterprise. Only a small minority of startups succeed in realizing substantial gains. So the odds are not favorable. But then, when you think about Amazon, Netflix and the likes, you will understand that you could use your judgment to see which business idea and which teams are most likely to succeed and take the risk. 12. You are not too poor to give Have you ever heard of the saying that giving back to the universe attracts abundance? Well, that statement is not meant only for the wealthy. It is a general philosophy of life that works for everyone. People often give excuses for not giving to charity and the most used one is that they are broke and they will give when they are wealthy. The bitter fact is that if you cannot provide the little you have, you also would not bless when you have so much. Giving is more about compassion and gratitude than about the amount of money in your bank account. The truth is that there is a lot of money in the universe and giving is one way to unlock a higher level of riches. 13. Keep track of your finance Even if you stick to your budget, there is a need for you to also keep track of your finance. Financial record is meant not just for companies or rich people, it is a tool that everyone should maximize. On a weekly, monthly or bi-monthly basis, it's a personal choice. It is firmly advisable for you to check your account report or keep track of how money came in and how money left. It's the best way to manage your funds checking the inflow and outflow properly. When you pay attention to your records, it will be much easier to attain your financial goals. Money in itself is not scarce. It is how people handle it that makes it go far away from them. Handle it well and see the difference.